Welcome to the Thai Jazz Nation. Welcome to the Thai Jazz Nation. Thai Jazz Nation. Hey. Welcome to the Thai Jazz Nation. Welcome to the. Welcome to the. Welcome to the Thai Jazz Nation. Where we talk about fishing and competition. It's your boy Ox Pippin, aka Ox Fishing. Don't come over here tripping. Hey, hope you enjoy the show. Jeff Malott, Lunch Money Lambert, <laughs> Lego. Hey, welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Kai Fast Nation. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kayak Bass Nation. Coming to you live from the face of the sun. So yeah. hot here in Arkansas. I can't even complain about it, Ryan, because you're it's you're hot it's hot in this uh, in this house of mine. I came home to uh, a lack of air conditioning, so I'm not going to stand up. I'll there say that. Go. How you doing tonight, my friend? Ba- straight back from the uh, Arctic tundra of of Wisconsin. You thought that you know? I, I really thought it was going to be a little cooler up there. It got up to mid nineties both days, Ooh. and Sunday the the wind laid down on us a little bit, and it was steamy out there. Well, you you, you gave them hell up there. I know you went up there kind of half <laughs> handicapped, and you know we can talk about some of the assistance you received after the after your second day. But uh, tell us about your experience, man. I've kind of pumped up. I know the fishing is not there. You're not catching big bass except for Eric Siddiqui in this tournament. But what did you think of the environment for the first time being up there? Uh, I like the I like the city, the layout. It's beautiful up there. There's you know tons of little water and holes scattered uh, all about the area. the The fishing was, I mean, if you're just going to catch numbers of fish, I think it's a fantastic place. Uh, day two, I caught like 27 fish and not one over 15 and a half inches. Like that's a that's a downer right there. like when you're catching fish just you know you're you're on a school on the bite and you can't get one single adult fish uh that sucks like that, that makes for a long day you feel like you know there's no way to do any good there so that was kind of uh depressing a little bit yeah a lot of numbers caught it was just and it seems like every time the, there's a term up there it goes that way it's like whoever can find those Good ones, and when we say good ones, relative. You can find consistent 17s and 18s. You are cash. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, cash yeah, for sure, and that's what happened. We had three people went over 170 for two days, and all three one, two, three in the standings. So yeah, uh, there you go. We got two of them here tonight. We got Eric Sadiki and Zach Gibbons. Zach, of course, took the win. Eric, right, right behind him, he was the day one leader and caught a maybe not a giant bass for your neck of the woods, Ryan, but for up there, that's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen caught to be honest. Yeah. That was crazy. I, when, when somebody posted a picture on KBN or something and I was like, Oh man, like that's, <laughs> that if you find anything to go with that, that's a bag. That thing locked up from down South somewhere, like came up a few locks. Yeah. That's, I don't know. I don't know where that one came from or I don't know why it had no uh, other family up there. That bass was just, those old Florida strain got loose up there and just hung out by itself. I, I, I don't know if you, if you sit in La Crosse, Wisconsin and, and there's a bounty on my head, you will never cash in on that bounty. I'll say that. You probably ain't going to catch me back up there <laughs> running around. I had more fun catching the pike than I did the bass, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're spoiled down there in your neck in the Tennessee River, man. Catch some things anywhere. I mean, that's that's a that's a rough go of it, man. Like I've I've often wondered why the attendance was, you know, it was always kind of the the struggle for event series, and and it was on this one too. You know, I think we had 89 on this one, which it jumped up, you know, substantially in the past few days. But it's just tough. I mean, it's tough just trying to find adult fish, and like I ran that that area pre fishing and had you know, like two 16s and 18 and a half. And I was like, oh, there's quality fish here. 
and then you go and just try to weed through all those like hats off to the <laughs> to the guys that were able to stick it out i mean you saw jay's comments like he caught what like 40 fish that first mm-hmm. morning in one area i mean that's that's crazy to weed through to get a, a low to mid 80s limit yeah it's a long ways to get up there number one i think it hurts attendance i'm still a fan of the vibe up there i like that i like the little town i like the river it's different but i would I go understand. back and visit the town now on yeah. purpose I actually told told my wife when I when I get old and gray, and can retire and you know can go you south gray? for yeah well you know <laughs> old and dry on top. Like when I can go south for the winter, I can go north for the summer. I wouldn't mind hanging up the, out up there in the summer a little bit cooler. Yeah. You know, cool oh, that's a beautiful atmosphere. area. We stayed out on like a Mennonite farm. It's gorgeous. Really? I mean, just huge. Yeah, massive organic cornfields. They had giant you know giant barns and tractors and stuff everywhere and. Had a little cocker spaniel that lived with us for a minute. <laughs> did they, did they like cook for you or like? No, no, they were real any... nice though. They let us have late checkout so we'd go back and shower and stuff before we drove home. So they were real really? nice. Very mm-hmm. cool. Very cool. Just no the TVs. TV. That's all we were missing. Really, no TVs. That'd have been tough. You know, I can't sleep without some sort of TV. That'd been, that'd been yeah. Weird. We had to listen uh, to Abby. We yeah. just listened to him snore. <laughs> Well, you, you guys saw our guest tonight. We got Eric, uh, the runner-up in Big Bass Winter, and and we're waiting on Zach to jump in. He was in here in the lobby and then disappeared, so we'll wait for him to get back on and <laughs> continue to talk. If you guys saw on the in the comments before we went live, it's Revo giveaway night. Hey. It's Revo night, so to get in on the Revo giveaway, and it's any pair on the Revo website, and if you've ever gone and looked, which I hope you have already, maybe picked up a pair or two, there's some expensive pairs on there. Get you some glass lens, Jaspers, or Dunes. Look you up. I, I missed them. I accidentally forgot my Revo. I didn't forget them. Steve-O still has them somewhere. He's in Florida or something. He still has possession of my Revos, so I had to dig around and find a free pair of uh, Hobie glasses in the back of my truck and, and wear those. And I, Cam was like, how partial are you to those glasses? I was like, shut up. Not at all. They were free. Leave me alone. I saw uh, Steve's picture, selfie from the beach. Was he wearing them Reeves down there? Was that what those were? No, those weren't mine. I don't know. I don't know where mine live in his truck right now. He, he had that little shirtless selfie. I'm like, come on, Steve. Pan down a little bit, Steve. He's flexing. Uh, yeah, flexing on us. Uh, Elvis Lee's in the comments saying he missed missed me at this one. Hey, Elvis, I was pulling for you, man. He was up there in the top five day two for a minute. Climbing. So, I was pulling for you. He still had a good finish. So, Stack a leaderboard. It was one of them tournaments, like it always is up there. An inch or two can make a huge difference. I think, Ryan, maybe one call might have shot you up 20 spots, wouldn't you think? It was so close, man. And, you know, watching the leaderboard throughout the day, as people would catch a, a 16 or a 17, just seeing those names fly up, you know. <laughs> they were in 70th place and caught two fish and then, you know, made a massive jump. It's, it's crazy up there. Uh, Jim is asking the question of the night, had the leg hold up? Ooh, uh, it worked. I mean, it held up. It, it's it was uh, sore after day one. It was very sore after day two. Uh, in my competitive mind, I was like, man, I'm not catching a big fish here. I'm gonna run over to the Minnesota side <laughs> down at the old Root River. The Root River silted in at the mouth for anybody that ever thinks about making that run. <laughs> so I wasted about 45 minutes getting over there and about an hour and 20 minutes getting back against the current. Uh, so she was she was feeling pretty good last night. I iced her down in the hotel, but overall, I don't think it did any damage. Doesn't look like it's infected or anything, even though I took some waves over the bow. So I'll take it. It's a win. Good. W. Good. And you had a little little help getting off the water today too. Two, some of my favorite people in the world, the Hib sisters. Also, that actually the mom and daughter Carolyn and Krista Hibbs were there. Did they they end up helping you out of that? They, I, the fine. women, the women's fishing federation helped me out. Not only did the Hibs help me load my kayak, Krista did. Her mom volunteered her. It was she's voluntold that she was going to help me load my kayak. And then Kim Lange, a, a KBN uh, resident here as well, she grabbed my other because I had to unload everything onto the dock to get out. She grabbed my stuff and was bringing it over to my truck. I was like, boy, y'all are making me feel extra today. But thank you. Hats off to the ladies. I appreciate it. Yeah, and Krista made a hell of a run in. I think she finished just outside. She did really 10? well. She 11? did really well. Oh. She was fishing kind of around the corner for me, and I saw her limit after day one. I was like, boy, that's how you know when you should have went right instead of left. <laughs> yeah, she should make it in that TOC, I think, this year. She's yeah. had some good finishes. So yeah, she, she did really well. But she slides in there, and I think you're going to, Ryan. I don't know. It's going to be close, man. I I really would have liked to be in you know in the top 40 to feel okay about it. So I, I hope it's not another heartbreaker like – dardanelle's one fish miss last year but we'll see yeah I'm trying to message zach and see if he's having he was in and then he disappeared 
So I'll see if I can need to send him another link or not. Uh, we got a few more things we want to talk about before we get Eric and, and Zach in here. Uh, one, I don't know if you saw Ryan, but there's a tournament going on in Missouri. And you know, when, when the community calls, when there's somebody in trouble, Jay Harmon, who's a big supporter of the kayak fishing community in, in Missouri in this region over here, diagnosed with Parkinson's a while back and it's gotten bad enough that he can no longer kayak fish. So he's having to step away from kayak fishing. Now they're trying to get him a electric wheelchair. The group's doing a fundraiser. Josh Booth, who runs the all American series and the series up there in Missouri, put together a fundraiser tournament for him. Somebody shared it on KBN already. Mm -hmm. So it's on I the group it. page I saw it earlier today. It's on the group page. Just, you know how we do, if you can't fish it, who cares? Just sign up anyway. Uh, help him uh, get that wheelchair so J yeah, jay needs push it. that thing out yeah good dude parkinson's a, is a horrible uh, disease and i know he's gonna fight it but anything we can do to help him we gotta do it so there you go go find that and support support jay um what else we got for tonight right any, any other tournaments go down no I, I don't think anything went down we've got the native on gunnersville the yeah. MLF style tournament is on Gunnersville Saturday. So if you're in the area or love fishing Gunnersville, uh, jump in that one, you know, bring plenty of water. It's probably going to be, <laughs> probably going to be a scorcher, but you know, that big bass power hour, it, any cast can be a giant on like a real giant, not like an 18 inch giant, but a real giant on Gunnersville. So get down know, there and get in on that one. Is Gunnersville, I know they have fork left. Is that the last two of their series or is there one in between? Yeah. Uh, I think, I think fork capped it off, right? Fork's the last I one. I didn't know if there was one yeah. between now and then or not. I don't think but, so. I don't think there is. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be at the fork when I hope. If all goes well. Jordan so. Lee's going to fish it, they said. Hopefully he don't get clapped like last time he fished it. Oh, yeah. When we ran the uh, original Tournament of Titans, he jumped in that one too. Yeah, and there's one he more thing. He did top 10, though. Yeah, yeah, so. he did. I remember that tournament. That was cool. You guys, That was kind of the beginnings of tournaments branching off away from one organization and big, you know, big stuff trying to pop off pop up out there that, that was cool uh one more thing i wanted to get to you, ryan we've talked about this before on here and that is there's no avoiding it to a point that's copycat companies we talked about it after icast and i saw a recent um incident of this with a company out there you know our friend friend of the program tim percy makes mm -hmm. a lot of accessories i think dugout carries a handful of them oh yeah uh, he ships them all over the country well now he's had a few parts and accessories copied it looks like another one has been copied this time by the fellas over at one objective uh something with the hobie seat risers they look basically identical yeah i saw he was putting those out it's like uh like the reinforcement thing to keep those uh holes from cracking every time you sit down yeah yeah so my my question is there's only so many ways to retrofit these kayaks with accessories right so is it free game or should people at least make them somewhat different rather than just straight up copy the, I mean, cause you know, there's probably not patents out there. I'm assuming things like that. But. Well, that's what I, I mean. That's the thing is like, you know, what defense is there, I guess, from, yeah. from a uh, kind of do it yourself guy that's trying to innovate and, and make products like what, how can, how can you protect your, you know, intellectual property? And is there like, where does that qualify in like 3d printing and stuff? Like, I don't know. I, it sucks. Like I understand Tim's uh, very upset. Is about it more it, of, is it more of a, like an honor system? Like let's, I, I let's... just don't know how we have, like you see it a lot. in if you look at like bass boat, fish finder mounts and things like there's yeah. a lot, like, I don't like know Ram how, balls. how you, you see 15 yeah. different Ram balls on Amazon, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know how you determine who, who is first or gets pro or if that's just part of it, you know, if that's just competition, like, Hey, good idea. I think I'm going to go make one myself too. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Tricky. Like you said, the age of 3d printing, uh, people can, can snatch up your ideas. I know China does that stuff with the U S all the time, but, oh yeah. and you know, as a kayak fishing community, you would think people would at least maybe say, Hey, that's a great idea. I'll put an extra bump or on it or something, make it yeah, look a little right, bit yeah, different. For make sure. it look a little bit different. I don't know, but Hey, whatever. I, I don't like it, but it happens with baits, happens with boats, happens with accessories. It just happens. And it keeps happening so I, I don't know if there's a way around it i mean like everybody's saying in the comments it's pretty much patent or or you know you're out of luck yeah lance patent your hose he's right lance uh and shout out to lance i know his his new kayak shop opened down in texas hopefully they're uh off and running Rocking down there I don't, know, I don't know if he's on he had a soft open or if he's full go but good luck down there in texas uh lance uh with that said i see zach in the, in the lobby there so let's shout out our sponsors real quick Dugout Bait and Tackle, presenting sponsor of the whole show, of course. Saw Steve rocking that dugout hat down there on the beach. So 
hit out dugoutfishing.com go get your boat rigged to dug out pick up a new boat to dug out and of course i got every kind of bait under the sun including copies of other baits probably yeah yeah i don't know oh yeah uh pro guide lithium i'm still kind of have a little tech hangover from that show we had two weeks ago man I've, I've learned yeah so that much was a good there. one I'm if, back. if you yeah. miss that one go back and and check out the battery show that was a good one yeah, Bangtail Whiskey. I need to. We're going down to the beach next month. Do they have distributors down around that way? Alabama, uh, where are you get in Florida? Yeah, yeah. He's based out of Florida, so yes. Maybe I can pick up a few bottles down there for the for the beach. And then, of course, tonight Revo giveaway. I'm doing the Revo giveaway, all you do is like and share, and like and comment on YouTube and Twitch. Got the Gill shirt on. It's getting to be about that season. Get on Gill, save yourself twenty five percent. KB Nation twenty five over on Gill before it gets cold outside. And then Z-Man and Seagar, of course, we do those giveaways every other week. So there we oh, go. Yeah. Uh, Calvin asked for a Roro update. I didn't really want to get into that tonight, but it's been good news up until tonight. We got some good lab work back um, the last few days, really. We got some good uh, scores back on her Curie score from her MIBG scan, some other things. But today, there's a secondary tumor that has started to grow. They don't know if it is malignant or not. So we don't have all the answers yet, but they're talking about surgery. They're talking about more chemo. We don't know. So all signs are pointing good. I think it's just a speed bump and all signs are still going to point good. I'm going to stay positive. So right now it's wait and see on that new growth, but overall all her labs are looking good. All her scans are looking good. So prayers up that, that we stay going down that path. So thanks for asking Kelvin. But with that said, Ryan, what do you say? I'm going to talk to these boys about how to catch them in lacrosse. Let's do it. I think I think Zach's getting his phone figured out here. We're going to <laughs> have him dialed in in a minute. <laughs> What's going on, Zach? There he is. S Zach's can you, figuring his phone can out. Can you blur yeah. Siddiqui's fishing online shirt out, please? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at Eric's back seat. That's how you roll back out of Wisconsin. Dang, right son. Eric, Eric what said, uh, you packing back there, boy? Holy cow. <laughs> wow. That speaks to the beer quality of Ohio. Are you buying for a bar back home or what? Uh, I'm thinking about starting one. <laughs> Just spotted cow. <laughs> That's all you're going to serve. Just gonna spotted relabel cow. It. Private label it. Yeah. I like it. And a check. I right. saw a check back there too. So yeah. That's a start. Yeah, is that yeah, how you get Hobie sweet. to pay you on the spot? You just get him to give you uh, cases of, of spotted and roll out of there? No check? That's all I need. <laughs> It, they paid. They probably paid him in spotted cow. Just traded it out. Kept the cash. Gave him a spotted cow. I can't hear you guys. You can't uh -oh. hear. No uh -oh. sound. We heard you for a second, Zach. We're gonna let Zach work that out. <laughs> Still terrible. I'll send it. I'm gonna remove him, but then I'll send him another link. That's what I'm gonna do. All right. All right. Do it. Do it. Do it. Get into so, it, Eric, while I work on this. Yeah. Right we'll now. we'll go ahead and and continue on with Siddiqui. So for anybody that didn't keep up with the tournament, uh, Eric caught probably the biggest bass on the upper Mississippi river that's ever been there. And also had one of, and to my knowledge, the biggest limit in one of these big tournaments, uh, up there on day one. So how, number one, I saw how your pre-fishing went <laughs> cause I was with you, but, uh, you, you didn't really do a whole lot of pre-fishing you said you found you found these fish on what tuesday or something and you knew there were fish there but you had no idea really what it was holding you were like eh, i'm gonna go enjoy lacrosse and and then i'll come back on tournament day and figure it out so number one what did you find on tuesday that led you to believe that was you know the a spot and then how did how did day one go well i fished that area um in a tournament a couple of years ago and came in fifth or something. So, uh, you know, I kind of knew the area already. I went to check it out and, um, just kind of motored over all these fish. Saw what looks like, looked like 17, 18s in the grass and stuff like that. Made a few casts and caught a few fish. And, uh, it was Tuesday. I was on the water for about three hours and, uh, enjoyed myself the rest of the week and decided not to sore lip any and, uh, just showed up there and, and caught them. I don't know where that 22 came from. I've been here, I don't know, six or seven times, I'd say, over the years, and I've never caught one over 20 on the cross, so I, I really don't know where that fish came from. But that was pretty unbelievable. Yeah, what's big bass up there usually, Eric? Because I've been there a few times, too. It seems usually around 20, 20 and a half, usually wins it. Yeah, so we made, uh, me and Christine and a bunch of us made bets on um, what 
big bass would be, what it would take to to win it, and what it would take to cash a check. And um, uh, most people said 19 and three quarter was, which is what it would have been if I hadn't caught that giant. And that's what I called. I also called what it would take to win on the dot and what it would take to cash a check on the dot. So they all owe me some soft plastics. Right. Some soft plastics. <laughs> heavy, wa- <laughs> heavy wagers there. Why are, we right. not getting yeah. why, are we, why are we not getting this on valleys? Like cornholes on there where you can bet. We need to get the kayak fishing tournaments on there. <laughs> we should do a little, right. I think we should do a little side, little side hustle there. <laughs> Hey, Zach, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you good now. Hey. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. I was going to be cooking. Not that we didn't want to talk to Eric, but we got to have the winner. You know what I mean? We got to have the winner. Yeah, for here, sure. So. Right. So, how you doing? You, you're on the way home from work? I know you said you were yeah, running late. Yeah, I'm like, get... yeah, for some reason I couldn't get service. So luckily, Menard's here has Wi-Fi, and I just pulled in the parking lot. That's we appreciate amazing. your commitment. That's some Wisconsin, yep. uh, Minnesota stuff right there. Pull into Menards and do the live stream. I love it. Uh, so, Zach, we just heard from Eric. How did your pre-fishing go? Like, did you – obviously, you're much more local than uh, than Eric, but did you kind of have an idea already of where you were going to go, or did you just kind of stumble up on, on what you ended up fishing? Uh, <clears throat> I had an area kind of – well, I had an area I fish a lot that I know, like, very well. And uh, I fished uh, Bassmaster in that area a month or a little over a month ago. So I checked that spot out. There wasn't really any any fish left. But I ended up just running around checking out, uh, like, all the high percentage areas um, in the area and just kind of came up with a game plan and had, like, three or four spots where I just bounced around from. Simple. I love yeah. it. I listened to you on the uh, the live stream, AJ's live stream rewards, and that's basically what you said. Is you went back and rechecked your stuff, really wasn't happening, started covering water, locked yep. the frog in your hand after you caught a few fish, and that was the deal. Yep. Yeah, and for people that haven't been up there, everything looks like it'd be good for a frog. All, yeah. All over, the, all over the place. For sure. So how did your how did your day one start out, Zach? Like how you know. When, when you first got out there, was it on fire? Were you just knocking them out of the park, or did you have to kind of work for it? Um, well, both mornings I started on a sand drop, and the fish were, like, schooling for, like, a good 20, maybe maybe 30 minutes every morning. And uh, i just throw a popper up there. And, yeah, day one, I caught my limit pretty quick, but they're all, like, 13, 14s. And my last fish before I left that sand drop was, uh, I think it was an 18. And then I just died. What did you have to get into, Siddiqui? You caught that big one pretty early, didn't you? It was around 11 when was I caught it? the big one. It's probably yeah, the first time I, was... I looked at my phone from beating it against my face all morning. Yeah. So I caught a, I had like two 17 and three quarters and a 17 and a quarter. And then caught that one. I had like a 15 and a half. I decided to go back to that area and call it at the end of the day um, and caught a 16 and three quarter. Um, so it was a pretty good limit anyway. Were you doing something similar? Were you fishing sand drops or grass or what What was kind of your approach to it? Yeah, it was uh, about two and a half foot of water. There was a, it was a 150 yard stretch I was fishing, but all the big ones came in about a, about a 30 yard stretch. And I was just uh, going back to it, just letting it rest. Um, I had wind all day the first day, so they were pretty much biting all day. Uh, I threw a jackhammer all day long. I tried a few different things in the morning, threw a frog, different stuff, and couldn't get them to go and started throwing that jackhammer, and they were just wrecking it, like, the whole day. I didn't have to pick up anything else. And, uh, yeah, so day two, the wind just died for me. So uh, switched directions, too, but... It, end of the day it finally picked up and uh every time it every time it blew i was able to upgrade there at the end of the day uh just so i ended up uh catching one with about you know a minute left and uh got it got it on the board trying to take a picture and a fly started biting the crap out of my ear (laughs) i was just like forget it (laughs) and uh but i got the picture and got it in so uh that bumped me up to second so Good fish. So you rode that jackhammer for two days? <clears throat> yep. 
I did. And, and, and Zach, what was your secondary bait? I know you said you went to the frog most of the rest of the day on day one and two, right? But did, you caught a few early on something else. I can't remember what you said in that. Yeah, day. I caught them on a uh, popper on that sand drop. <laughs> popper, and, popper, that's right. Yeah. You know, and the rest did of the day, you? I pretty much threw the frog, like just covered, covered. I went to all those spots and just threw the frog. After after seeing Siddiqui wreck him on day one, did you think <laughs> that you had a chance at catching him on day two? Were you like, oh, I I got this. I'm going to make a good run at it. Uh, I was definitely worried about him because I knew it wouldn't it'd take like, what, mid-80s or low, kind of low to mid-80s to get ahead of me there. So I was a little worried. And he wasn't <laughs> telling me either. Those two day tournaments are tricky. I was watching the leaderboard, not I, I was like, ah, Sadiki sandbagging, like sure, <laughs> surely he's yeah, got surely right. he's got a, another eighteen or something in the bag there. It was uh it was definitely a fun uh you know, fun tournament to keep up with on Tourney X just because one fish can make such a huge difference up there. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of big moves on day two from folks. You know, shit. Sh- catching mid seventies day one then jumping huge <laughs> spots by just jumping up into the eighties on day two. So a lot of people don't like those kind of tournaments. They like those grinders where you know that if you catch them, you're up there. So these, these kind of tournaments, it's, it's just weed through them. Like you said, Ryan, you got a little frustrated with it, but weed through them until you stumble on some good ones. Right. Zach, what do you think it is about that area? Why the there's, I mean, the numbers of fish is ridiculous. There's, there's tons of fish, what keeps them so short? Because I mean, these fourteen and fifteen inch fish are two to three pounds. Like they're fat. They're super fat. But why do they not get long? Do y'all cut them down up there? What's going on? <laughs> y'all eat all the big ones? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I just think they're just so plentiful. Maybe I think they end up getting long eventually. But yeah, I don't know. I think they're just a lot. Maybe a couple of good we'll come back in classes. We'll come back in 10 years and find out if they ever get long. <laughs> that one Siddiqui caught was 27 years old, is what they're saying. It probably was. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Dang. That's crazy. Did you have a lot of numbers, uh, Eric, on your on your day one or day two, or do you, you have to work pretty hard for them? Yeah, I caught a lot on uh, day one. I don't know. I probably caught 25 around there, I would guess. Um, and then day two – um caught a bunch i had a lot of pike move in i don't know if they moved in or if it's just the only thing i get to eat without that win but uh a lot of pike a lot of smaller bass uh until the later in the day you know knowing the size of the fish up there typically um when you first hooked this one did you think you had one of those lacrosse drum or did you think did you know it was a bass right away no i i mean i wasn't really didn't have time to think about it really it wasn't a i mean it was pretty it's a pretty tight channel i was fishing um so i hooked it and i and when it when it turned i saw it pretty quick and i was just like there's no way <laughs> and, I, and i got it in there and i was just thinking when i had to buy the boat i was like if i lose this fish nobody will believe this i've got to get this fish in. <laughs> nobody will believe i lost a 22 on the grass i don't care uh so i was pretty happy to, to land that one but uh, yeah, it was it's pretty amazing. But it did have a. There was another one that I mean, it was hard to tell how big it was, but it looked like it was about twenty. That was trying to take the bait away from that one when I was when I was fighting it. So uh, that's was, something that I noticed too. Like w- when you were landing fish, most of them had another fish or two that were coming up. You know, pecking at it mm-hmm. as you're reeling it in. So obviously they are you know very heavy in packs, even in the grass, because where I was at. I was I had like one thirty yard stretch of grass, and that's where all the fish were. Was just on, running the edge of that all day long. Let's uh, I, yeah, we got some answers. Them, they, were, they were there. Yeah, we got some answers. We got Elvis Lee saying that the locals eat those bass. Corey Sherman, they're there but hard to find. A lot of tournaments on those pools every weekend. I know Bob gets mad about that. He said there's too many tournaments on those pools. You need to use the different ones. I saw uh, a lot of people, a lot of local people talking about it was going to take 90 inches a day or whatever to win this one. You were wrong again. So stop saying that stuff. You give people uh, like me hope. <laughs> Lore, up, I guess he's from up there, says in winter, people keep those three to four pound bass and smoke them. There you go. Throw them on the smoker. It's a delicacy up in uh, Wisconsin. Mm. So there you go. Turn I can see that. Little, little bass bites with your cheese curds. 
one year I was up there and I thought I had found a little hidden spillway and I drug my kayak down this giant hill and probably <laughs> trespassed. I don't know, but I went back in there and dumped in. This is back when I had a wildy. This is way back in the day. D dumped this thing in. And, uh, when the sun came out, every local in Wisconsin made their way through those woods and was fishing off that spill, <laughs> spill like <laughs> buckets full, buckets full of everything, white bass, largemouth, whatever they could catch. It's crazy. I couldn't even fish it for all the people down there. So yeah, they, they out. Corey, he's still on there, right? He's not giving up. I know, man. I I'm, I'm just, I'm not reading this stuff anymore. <laughs> it's easy to catch 90 up there in the summer i think this was the summer it felt real summer up there to me yeah. i'm still i'm up. a little i'm a little red from how summer it was yeah Sadiki, uh, we're about to go full blackout mode on Sadiki. this is going to be a meme by tomorrow morning oh, it's, getting <laughs> it's getting dark now. i'm getting dark all you see is sunglasses fishing online <laughs> we had a uh, question for him that is not fishing related at all from tyler zingerly Okay. He says, does Siddiqui dye his facial hair? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He doesn't, but I know people that do. <laughs> That's El Natural uh, yeah. right there. Not yet. <laughs> Bob said, Darth Siddiqui. Come on, man. Come on. It's coming. The memes <laughs> are coming. Zach, did you have anything interesting uh, happen while you were trying to measure fish? Any, any uh, animals feeding on your blood or anything? Uh, I don't think so. I. <laughs> it's local, man. They don't I did have one. I, I did have one flop off the board. I did bring the out back instead of my PA fourteen just to get around a little easier. And I did have one flop off the board, but it never. It didn't matter at at then. Do you fish a local a local kayak trail up there as well? Yeah, I fish uh, Minyak. I mean, yeah, yeah, somebody, okay. we'll somebody's bragging on him, Ryan. Somebody I know, I saw that. Yeah, that's what, Zach's having that's a what made me throw that plug out there. There you go. I thought you were just reading mine, so I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, trying to, man. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, Zach. You Obviously, you, every fish, it sounds like, you caught on top water. Popper, frog. Yeah. So how many fish did you miss or lose out there fishing that way? Oh, man. Um, most of them actually ate it pretty well. Uh there's a couple that blew up on it that I missed, like I missed, and the frog, you know, flies back behind you and lines all tangled up and yeah. spent five minutes untangling all that. But for the most part, they were eating it pretty good. Did you make any moves on day one when that wind really kicked up later in the morning? Uh, did you have to readjust anything? Did that change your game plan at all? Um, not really. I ended up, uh, going up river like a mile so I was, at that point i was going with the wind and then at the very end of the day i had to go you know against the wind to my last spot i wanted to hit but yeah that wind was brutal it was it's tough to paddle against did you guys either of you and i'll go ahead and ask this question jeff um yeah. either of you guys live scoping okay i'm gonna take that off the list I didn't bring Neither. a single, I didn't bring any electronics at all. Probably smart. <laughs> I know though, I, you, you saw a lot of people talking about the, the sandbar bite and the spe specifically the, the holes behind the sandbar. I know some guys were scoping on that stuff, you know, where it was applicable. You could watch them eat a swim bait or something coming off there, but the winners weren't scoping. So there you go. Did, did anybody do any damage on wing dams? I know they play a lot up there. I've fished them before. I didn't fish any this time. Uh, I've I've caught fish off them, but I've never really caught big ones, so uh, kind of quit messing with them. I know I Abby that. Abby and RJ went down and ran some uh, pre fishing and didn't didn't really have a great time on the old wing dam bite. So that kind of <laughs> kind of nicks that in my mind myself. I learned a hard lesson last time I was there on that. I had a really good day one, and then they. Just completely ghosted me on a couple of wing dams that I was counting on. So I don't, I don't know if I ever want to do that again. I think that wing dam bite, especially with the wind changing directions the way that it did on us, number one is probably really hard to fish on, on day one because you got the current coming down, but the wind was blowing you up harder than the current was. So if you're on a real current driven bite like that, that could make, make presenting that tricky. And then of course the south wind wasn't, wasn't good for that anyway. Yeah. Zach, tell us a little bit about that frog bite, man, because we just had Tyler on here. When he won the Bassmaster event you were talking about earlier, right? And he, he won it on a frog. 
you turn right around back to back, win another event on the frog. People think frog fishing. They always think deep South fishing frogs down on Gunnersville, frog. which is the, the Mecca of doing that. But it seems like these guys from the North, man, there, there's a lot of vegetation in all those lakes up there. You guys are, yeah. are experts with the frog as well. So is that one of your go-tos in general? Or do you just tie it on for this tournament? Talk about your frog fishing up there. Um, it's definitely a go-to down in lacrosse, uh, but like a lot of the lakes I fished up here are just full of grass. Like, like grass is the deal up in Minnesota for sure. And a lot of, most of the year it's deeper grass, but they're definitely uh, almost all year up shallow too. So yeah, I throw frog quite a bit. What's your go-to frog? What's your favorite brand of frog? Uh, I like the Spro Bronze Eye. Classic. No. Sadiki, why, why wouldn't you throw a frog, Sadiki? <laughs> I did throw some. I threw a frog a little bit. They were eating that jackhammer too good. Yeah. So, I, I, uh, when I, the first day I prefished that, ja- like the jackhammer was just, you know, the bite was on fire. Plus you catch some pike and mix it up and have a little bit of fun in between. But I was yeah. like, if they're eating this thing, I'm just going to throw it all day for two days. Right. And... I knew I was going to land most of the fish that I hooked on a frog. You know, you lose a lot. So, um, didn't want to take that chance. Figured I might as well just throw it. I did throw a swim jig around a little bit. I, I caught some on, on that. Um, but the pike liked that thing too much. And, and I was, so I just went back to the jackhammer. Did either of you guys talk about what pool you fished or are you even going to reveal that? I know you don't want to give up your juice too much, but were y'all both in the same pool? Did you guys even talk at the awards? Different pools? I didn't ask him where he was. I was in pool seven. It's usually where I fish. I do something different out there every time. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's a, it's a fun fun pool to fish. Yeah. If you start, I mean, it's better just, in my opinion, to focus on one pool and just kind of, you know, break it down. Um, it, there's just fish everywhere, so it could get confusing if you go try to fish yeah. everywhere. So, um, yeah, you're better off just picking a pool and trying to figure it out. It's a long ways from pool seven to pool nine, too, if you're trying to move around and check spots. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. a long ways down there. Holy smokes. Yep. When I drove up there and came across Iowa, it sent me to a, a house somewhere <laughs> up above pool seven, which turned out to be an hour and 20 minutes uh, up from where my actual Airbnb was. So that's the only time I got to see pool seven. <laughs> Is that water, Eric? <laughs> Yeah, water. Okay. <laughs> I'm driving. I know. That's why I asked. That. <laughs> that was straight moonshine. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. I know you like that. You're from Southern Ohio. I know. How, I know how it goes down. What Southern about Ohio. you, Zach? Did you do? <laughs> yeah. Did you do a uh, pool seven? A pool seven? Or are you on no, down? I, on down. Somewhere? I was down on nine. Um, but so, yeah, so it could be one. Stay off pool eight. I got it. So sure. yeah, I, go to, it could be one on any pool. They're all good. Bob I wouldn't say that, but they're all there anyway. Bob said he loved, <laughs> loves Pool 8 and went to 9 and 10 on tourney days. I don't oh, know. Why, why do you love Pool 8, Bob? <laughs> I like Pool 8 a lot eight. because it is close to town. You can, like, get up a little later, go have some lunch if you get have a bad day. It's right there in town. I like that. that was me. I was like, it's 20 minutes from the front door. It's got a dock that I can sit on and scoot my kayak out to get into it. So <laughs> those, were, those were the determining factors I was looking for. Yeah, Corey, I've had some real good days on the lower end of Pool Nine, um, personally. But I haven't been up. Todd anymore. Martin's, <laughs> Todd's trying to sell your spot, man. He, he said for the right price, he'll tell everyone Zach's spot. Damn, you don't know, Todd. You don't know. He also said he also <laughs> said Pool Ten was fire. What's he trying to do? <laughs> uh, this is this is craziness. I don't know. I, you can't trust these people, Jeff. This is crazy. Uh, can't Zach, have you ever you. fished like down south? I mean. I, Obviously, you're coming down for the TOC now. Uh, have yep. you ever fished down south here? Um, yeah, I've been to Kentucky Lake. I've been to a few lakes in Texas. Um, I did call or I got a roll down spot to the TOC a couple of years ago on when we went to Loudon. That sucked, but hopefully, chick <laughs> uh, is better. <laughs> you just kidding, baby. Everybody. You you stay calm back there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you if you're comparing Chickamauga to Kentucky Lake or Loudon, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Loudon shouldn't even be in a tournament period. That that lake is is rough. Kentucky Lake, 
it's getting better, but it's still the the worst on the chain. So I think uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with Chickamauga. Sadiki, right. you've obviously fished Chickamauga quite a few times, so you you at least have a little bit of background going into it. Yeah, I have. I used to love Chick. It's uh, it's gotten a little tougher over the years, let's say. But uh, uh, the past four yeah. years, it's gotten a lot tougher just because of all the yeah. huge <laughs> tournaments that they you know they bring those tournaments in, and everybody wants to come down and have a fishing vacation and everything, and that really yeah. really affects these somehow, these legs. Somehow, it just doesn't seem to affect Guntersville. I don't know. I don't know what it is about that that place, but. Uh, um, like seven or eight years ago, Gunnersville was down bad too. It was fishing as tough as what Chick is now. Like it's gotten way better in the last five years and keeps getting better. I, I feel like every year it improves, honestly. Yeah. I might come down and fish that native. I'm, uh, I'm going to see if I can do that. I love you better hurry up and see. It's, it's coming up here in a, here in a few yeah, days. Yeah, we got some questions rolling in. David Morris had one, which we're talking pools and all that. And I guess people that haven't been up there or don't fish river systems, they wouldn't know what we were talking about. So we can answer that for you, David. So Mississippi River is broken up into different sections of water. Like you said, different areas of water through locking dams that, that create those different pools. So there you go. What It starts with a smaller number north and works its way down. <laughs> What what's the best stretch up there, Zach? I mean, I know the tournaments are usually held right there, you know, around downtown Lacrosse. Are the the further north pools better? Like what? I mean, what's what would you pick if you had to say, I'm gonna go catch a 90 inch bag today? I'd definitely be up on the like Upper Mississippi up by me for smallmouth. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of good stretches up here, like anywhere in that Monticello, the Clearwater area is pretty popular. But there's there's better stretches around. There's they're big. You know, there are good smallmouth up there, oh. but no one's ever won a lacrosse event on smallmouth. Are they just too hard to stay with? Are they just too pelagic up there? They just leave you? Yeah, I never chase smallmouth up. Yeah, or down there in lacrosse. Like I always go after largemouth. The I've heard there's bag. yeah I've heard there's 90 bags of smallmouth in the Mississippi, but I, it's never come to fruition in tournament play for two days anyway. Is that Todd true? Martin, Martin, don't talk about Goose Island. That still hurts. It's hard to rely on. After the tournament last month, I uh, I came through close to the area where I ended up fishing this tournament and uh, put up 92 inches of smallmouth in about 20 minutes. So. So they're there, they're around, just they move so much, it's hard to And you would hear about that pre-fishing in years past. You would see people posting, you know, big smallmouth and, and, you know, a good stringer of them, and then they would go back out on tournament day and try to find them, and they're they're ghosted, they're gone. So the I guess the smallmouth fishing is just more consistent up there in pool one, Zach? Yeah, for sure. They're, it's like uh, more, uh, it's definitely different than pool seven, eight, nine. It's like, you know, heavier current, um, all rock. It's uh, yeah, it's completely different. How how much further of a drive is that? I mean, from Lacrosse to Minneapolis. Uh, Lacrosse to Minneapolis is probably like two ish, two and a half maybe at the most. But then you go another at least half hour up the river there, and then you're into some better smallmouth water. So can we just do that and host it out of Minneapolis? <laughs> Heck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, somebody line that up. You guys see the banners I'm throwing up. We're doing a Revo giveaway tonight. Like and share on Facebook. Like and comment on Twitch and YouTube. We've had a Twitch viewer all night. Once again, Ryan, we're, we're hot on the Twitch. I love it. Love it. We had two for a minute. Can you believe that? It's crazy. This thing's getting viral. out of control. Going, going virtual over there. Hey, did you get to get a picture with Bob? I never even saw Bob. What? So Bob, number one, Bob didn't fish the tournament, and he didn't come hang out with us Thursday night. Bob Bailey, you son I'm of upset. Guy. I'm upset. I did see giant raccoons everywhere up there, so now I understand why Bob is so into coon hunting, because coon that place is stocked with giant raccoons. He was at awards, he said. Well, Ryan was I wasn't at awards, Bob. <laughs> I was nowhere close to awards, so thanks for showing up when it didn't count. Damn it, Bob. We still love you, Bob, but come on. I, I didn't go at all, so I guess I can't. Drove, drove 12 and a half hours to see Bob. That was the only reason I went. <laughs> and then missed him. 
Uh, we got some questions. Here's one from Bob. How many jackhammers did Siddiqui donate to the Pike? Did you lose any? How many did you lose? <laughs> uh, did not lose any, actually. Whoa, um, wire, I, wire I, leader? I retied. No, I just retied every time I caught a Pike or, or whatever. And, and if I saw it, had it, you know, further down its throat, then I just uh, net them as fast as I could. And then I just retie. I probably retied 100 times over two days, but uh, better than hooking into a bass and having a freight line and losing it. So, yeah, I could retire pretty quick. I retired after day one, but I didn't lose any jackhammers until day two. I had a pike just, I mean, choke it. It it got it down in its gills, and I was like, man, I ain't going to mess with <laughs> I ain't gonna mess with this. I tried to get the my second set of pliers. I tried to get them down there and fiddle around and open its mouth up, and I was like, man, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to bleed out here either. Yeah. I was catching them on that height delight. Um, it got it got pretty torn up. I only had the one, so after day one, I uh, called Matt Ball and he uh, hooked me up with a couple. <laughs> I was using that green pumpkin shad color, and then I switched over to uh, chartreuse and white mini max the second day, and they ate it pretty good as well. It's cool. Mini max is a little hidden gem in the lineup. Dude, that thing it was great, that but works. that's the only one I had, and that's the one that that pike swallowed all the way down so I was like meh okay <laughs> we'll go we'll go back to just good old white I caught him pretty good on Champlain on that mini max yeah that's like a bad that. little dude that's a good that's yeah. a good bait for those of you that haven't tried the mini max I highly recommend that and I, I don't mean this because it's small but it's good bang for the buck too it's like half the price of the jackhammers yeah it's still, still a good little bait um any dogfish I I lost my pliers to a dogfish Corey I was trying to trying to get the old jackhammer out and it it slapped at me a little bit and knocked the pliers out of my hand about two hours into day one you see bob's comment guess where you're at is a raccoon sanctuary they'll rob you at gunpoint down there i didn't even see that and i dang sure didn't have a lunchable i wish i did <laughs> yeah uh this question was from youtube earlier i, I saved it earlier joe mack on youtube Curious about the entry fee. The Hobie entry fees are two ninety five, but he's asking how many of the bigger league tournaments do you guys fish? And then thinking about the future, I guess what's the max entry fee you would pay? Because we've talked about this for a while, you know, high dollar series, elite series kind of stuff. So, what's the max these one of you would pay to travel around and fish? It's the max I would like, pay. Yeah. Yeah. Or you think sustainable? Like if, if somebody said, hey, we're going to have a $1,500 entry fee for six tournaments, how many people show up? Eric, honestly, who could, who could pull it off, you think? Sorry, you're, you're broken up there. What would you say? If, if somebody wanted to have a big money event, number one, how, and we talked to Eric and I actually had this conversation when I was driving back to the house one of the days, but how much do you think people would pay for a big money tournament? And then how many people do you think would participate in a higher entry fee tournament? And it's two two sixty five for Hobie now, right? By the way, to answer the first part of his question, I thought it was two ninety five. Maybe two ninety five. I don't know. Something you just like paid that. to enter. Shit. I don't look at that stuff, man. I'm just glad when my PayPal works. <laughs> Is Eric frozen in time? He's frozen. Yeah, in the you uh, you broke up a little bit there. I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing you said uh, how much would I pay to fish a tournament? Yeah, if we were if if a big money series started. What do you think entry fee should be, and how many people do you think would participate? Oh, um, yeah, I think uh, we at least need to get it up to seven, eight hundred. You know, uh, that's pretty much what the co-anglers pay. You know, um, so I think that would be a good place to start. And uh, I think we would get you know at least fifty to seventy in a in a tournament like that. What do you think, Zach? Be my guess. Uh, me personally, I don't know, maybe like 500 if it's somewhere I'm confident I could do all right in. <laughs> oh, man, cherry pick. Right I like that. Yeah. yeah. 500 if it's right here in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. I think, I think 500 is probably the next step. I think you'll see, you know, things move more toward that direction. Uh, as far as people traveling the country, you got to think about how many people you're going to be able to pull. So like you could do a thousand dollar entry fee tournament and 12 people might show up. So you've hurt participation and you've hurt the overall pot. So I I think, I think that if you're really talking about a a higher entry fee, kind of more, you know, I think that kind of deal would have to be like 
invitation only type deal, like more like an elite series. I think five or six hundred bucks is probably good. Even that, I'd say you're looking at fifty. You know, probably fifty people. Yeah, and it, you know how many sponsors are willing to help uh, supplement that, right? I mean, I know there's some companies out there right now. I know Old Town takes good care of its team. Uh, Eric, I know Dakota takes care of y'all. Uh, yep. in one way, shape, or form. I don't know exactly what to do, but how many companies will say, "Hey, we'll take our best best anglers and we'll we'll foot the bill for some of that as well"? You know, I mean, are yeah. they ready for that? Because I mean, five hundred, as you already said, Eric, that's not even what the codes pay, right? So, right, right. We got we got to start somewhere. We got to start leveling up somewhere. I agree. Uh, Joe Max says he thinks so too on 500. I'd like to see a pro kayak angler be able to half ass survive off of winnings. Yeah, and it's gonna be more than that. Even the even the actual elite guys don't survive off of winnings. That's that's yeah. not the deal. But at the same time, the reason the sponsor money isn't there is because the eyes aren't there yet. You yeah. know, very few people have that notoriety. They can pull in those big sponsor dollars right now. It's not. The, the thing is, it's not just about the fishing part. Like the marketing part is what these companies are looking for. They don't, you know, they don't care if you go out and win every single term, if nobody knows who you are, like that doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. Our yeah. sport is uniquely hard to crack the code on streaming it. It's very, very hard. And, and what, no offense to anyone that did KFL or KBT, that that's not it. Yeah, that <laughs> not even remotely in the ballpark of it. It's, it's gotta be a real, very, very expensive high tech, streaming setup and I, I don't just don't know how you would pull it off to be able to cover enough anglers yet i mean what do you think <laughs> uh, i mean i was talking to i was talking to bob cobb this year at the Bassmaster, and uh he asked me what i thought it would take to you know take kayak fishing the next level and and i said just live streaming i, I mean i really think that's the only way i mean that's what makes the voters so popular so um that's what took them to the next level i think it it's no different here. What's Joe talking about? Emphasis on girls. What? <laughs> I don't know. He skipped to the to the part where we're going to talk about downtown lacrosse. I think he just went straight to the jugular. <laughs> I don't oh, know man. anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. There's a lot of good comments back and forth. Uh, you know, uh, an attempted elite series trail that was 500 bucks that didn't pan out. Uh, another comment about you actually have to pay people for that five hundred dollar entry fee. So there's there's uh, a lot of a lot of back and forth going on in the comment section right now. Yeah, just throwing out a high number entry fee doesn't do anything. You got to have the the right the right structure behind it first, and then uh, people will be willing to pay that. Like I think and right you have now to have the right entity too. I think yeah, yeah. I think Bassmaster would be. I think they'd be the one that could pull something off. And, and yeah. like Eric said, I think they're going to have to pull in that media coverage part, even if it's just doing kind of making a, a mashup documentary type deal where they interview people at board check. They cover the day one results, maybe have the top 10 come in for an interview, then cover the awards, like make something out of it to where it's more marketable. Yeah. At the very least, I think maybe whether it's Bass, Hobie, whoever start, passing out you know after an event or two start passing out gopros to the top 25 and aoi and start capturing footage and make a show out of it or something you know what i mean do something well hobie and i don't know if they still do or not a couple of years ago hobie was putting cameras on people's boats to where you know they would just take the memory card and and pull footage from from the guys that they had it on their boats, guys and girls sorry they probably stopped doing that because steve fields got to see too many people taking a leak or coming yeah. outside of the boat. <laughs> they actually <laughs> <laughs> they had one on my uh, boat at uh that's Sam Rayburn, um, the last year, the year before. Um, I never saw the footage though. I never saw them use it, but it, Steve said he, uh, got some really good stuff out of it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Started, what, started his own streaming one. service. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's only fans now, but it's okay. Wow. Uh, Corey said he don't think, he doesn't think he'd be willing to pay that much without his motor, especially on the river. That that's something else. I mean, fast allows motor. Hope he doesn't for now. So we'll see I have never going. wanted a motor so badly as i did sunday <laughs> trying to get back in that heat my leg was throbbing and i was like dang come on <laughs> what i'd give for the old newport fired up right now and dan just throwing smoke most kayak anglers are not fit for live stream <laughs> come what on do you dan. mean fit you mean what, fit? what do you mean you mean like their language or their explain like that body habitus what are you talking about there Dang. He's never, I, he ain't looking at the professional fishermen or hearing them dog cuss each other out there <laughs> on the water. Like there's plenty of bass boat pros just raising hell out there. Yeah. We need to have Cody pray on one night to tell us about all this. Cause he, you gotta be a professional at cutting away too. When things go sideways. 
Can't just let that roll. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's getting graphic in the comment Shoot. section. Yeah. <laughs> what in the world? Uh, Jason Willis on Facebook asks, are either one of you after this going to make it down to Sam Rayburn? I guess you're both in the TOC already, so if you're chasing NOI points, I guess you'll go. But either one of you going to that one? Yeah, uh, I got too much going on at home, so I won't be there. Zach said, there's, not a, there's not a whole lot of tournaments left, and you know, oh. I, just, I like fishing, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down and fish that one. Uh, another question from Matt Brown: Is anyone going to fork on Halloween weekend for that uh, No Limit event? I'm gonna try to make my fall comeback at that event. That's the, that's the plan. That'll be a good one, I think. From from all the reviews that you've seen talking about fork in the fall. Yeah, fork gets tough in late October, early November. It can be, I mean, the old TOC, it was always uh, hit or miss on, on numbers for that. So we'll see. We'll see. But it'll be fun regardless. Zach, what's next on your list, tournament fishing? Uh, this weekend I got one of those Minyak turnings on Minnewaska up here in Minnesota. Is that going to be smallies or largies? Uh, there's a little bit of both. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to win it. I've never actually fished the lake, and I don't even know if I'm going to have time to pre-fish. So we'll see what happens. Nice. Uh, Bob says smallies. You see what Bob said about Eric? He said he looked like the Ohio version of Rip and Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that can up, be Bob. your Halloween costume, Sadiki. <laughs> hey, th this is something from Steve. He commented, Steve Fields in the comments talking about the cameras. He said, too many anglers pushed back when they asked to mount cameras. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. Matt, Matthew Brown said red flags. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fact. If you, you're trying to hide what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing yeah. it. That's auto DQ, Steve. Come on. Doesn't, we'll take the doesn't bother me. Yeah. I actually, I mean, seriously. I you. They have yeah, one at Champlain, too, on my boat, uh, but I tried to cross from uh, New York to Vermont in 30 mile an hour winds, and that thing did not make it. You lost yeah. one? No, it just got wet. Oh, I was like, dang. <laughs> well, Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, you talk about taking it to the next level. That's the thing that everybody's going to have to be willing to deal with and be comfortable talking to or interacting with. Uh, Don Trell Sullivan in the comments said, half of us have a camera anyway. Maybe the answer is not them giving us cameras, but have a cloud server set up where anglers can upload or something. Yeah. You know, some, something to make a production out of it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Steve said it right there. Everybody wants to be a pro without being pro. Facts. Straight up. <laughs> Danny Lee. That's deep, Danny. Sorry, man. Jeez. Uh, it's been a good comment section here for sure. Yeah, it's been it's been lit tonight. I like that. Uh, I need to increase the entry fee here. Put this one up here. Increase the entry fee by 10% every year, then the tournament sponsors would have to do the same marketing, cameras, boats, professional content creation. So, I agree. The problem is, you know, a lot, a lot of the sponsors, especially the industry sponsors, it's you have to prove to them why it's even worth spending any of their marketing money on kayak fishing. Like that's the uphill, one of the uphill battles. I don't know, increasing entry fees by 10%, they usually go up and, and probably close to 10% every year anyway, I feel like. So we've seen, you know, we've seen them slowly creeping up here, but I don't know. I don't know if that part's the answer. I think figuring out some kind of, live streaming into the kayaks like with your gopro whether you have a hot spot turned on or whatever i think that part is kind of a bigger player yeah 10 percent. they're just going to track inflation and do that yeah just fine at this rate uh tyler zingerly mentioned that big bass event on lake of those arcs turn out turnout hasn't been what was expected we had that guy on when that was starting a couple years we ago. we did i thought right? i remembered that yep but it really, it's done okay. It pulled 100 plus, but it hasn't really capped out or pulled the big numbers they expected. I, and that's just another one of those things. I, just, I, I don't know the answer to why. Uh, and this year's is actually on the same day as that Native Fork event. So we're, we're, we're splitting in the middle of the country. What? Bob Baylor said he wants to see footage of Danny Lee taking his kayak through the lock. Who, who locked through in a kayak? I mean, you can do it. I've seen yeah. them like, you know, yep. people doing touring kayaks. They'll lock through the Tennessee River just, yeah, just I guess, seeing like how far they can paddle or something. A lot of time to take. I mean, you can just drive around it. Todd Martins, I like how Bassmaster does it with a camera boat and drone. Steve Fields, he he flies his drone around. He flew it out uh, over Joe McElroy, losing a big one in a, in a lay down in this tournament. Yeah, Shane Carnahan says technology needs to catch up. The technology's there. It's just they're not going to spend 15 grand to put a 
that tech on every kayak in turn. Yeah. I mean, just- yeah. And, and until it's paid for by some company, a kayak angler is not going to spend 10 grand on a signal booster to <laughs> install in their kayak. Yeah. That, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. <laughs> Joe Mack, he said marketing people are idiots. Kayakers are more relatable and spend just, they do spend as much money on products. You know, outside of the boats, we do buy the same rods, reels, and everything else. So you got a point, my man. You got a point. Facts. Um, Look, I know both these boys are in the car. Eric's drinking moonshine there. I don't want to keep him too long. Um, you got anything else for him, Ryan, or any more questions from the crowd before we let them slide out of here and get on with their, with their night? I don't see I don't see anything else popping up. Congrats, guys. Obviously, you know, that was a grinder of a tournament, and you pulled it off. Siddiqui almost – you almost caught him. You tried. <laughs> you tried. <laughs> Zach, Zach just outran you there at the end. Yeah, yeah. I uh, always like this old stand, uh, Seinfeld stand-up. Where he uh, talked about second place. You're the number one loser. <laughs> Nobody lost ahead of you. Of all the losers, you're number one of that group. So. That's right. You won Big Bass, too, though. <laughs> Nobody beat you in Big yeah, Bass, so right. take that. Yeah, I didn't think that anybody would. I, I had another question for Eric, but I'm going to save it for offline. I'll just message him directly, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> he knows what it is. And Ryan oh, knows what it is, so I'm not going to do it. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> fellas, hey, congrats. We'll let you slide out of here. Have a great evening. Uh, Y'all take care. Mm -hmm. See you, boys. There they are, the winners from lacrosse. Uh, Appreciate them taking time in their car. Corey, uh, yeah, I did have fun up there. We went out and hung out Thursday night. Uh, a few of us got together in downtown lacrosse and, you know, kind of, kind of got the vibe. I like to do it on Thursdays. That way I don't feel terrible on, on Saturday, but, uh, I liked the, the downtown area. It was fun. You know, we had a good time, ate some good food. Uh, the fishing, it, you know, I love catching fish. That's fantastic. But like I said, it's just, uh, I don't like catching 25, 30 fish and, and not finding one, one decent one out of them. So I probably, I wouldn't drive up there to fish again. All right, y'all, we're going to do the giveaway. I thought that was a fun show, Ryan. Those guys gave us it was, juice. it was it's a great comment section. Appreciate y'all in the comments as always. I mean, it's a tough fishery and that's some good information for people, you know, going up there to, to try and run it themselves. It seems like, you know, any pool was producing. You just had to kind of find that one little magic area. Yeah. And like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, don't forget to go check out that Jay Harmon event with the Moyak fellas over there. Uh, try to support Jay and we're, we're winding the season. It doesn't seem like it can be August already, but we're winding the season down, man. We've just got a few big events to go. What happened? Where have we got? Well, I took three months off. That's one of the things, I guess. Yeah. That's why it seems so short. But yeah, we'll get Great. it. We'll get it back next year. Next year, we're gonna we'll be right back year. in there. Yeah, it's been a it's been a kind of a, not kind. Of, it's been a very disappointing season for me. I haven't even fished a tournament since day one of Kentucky Lake. Uh, bass is coming here to my backyard. I got no chance to qualify for it. It's been rough, but you know what? 2024 comeback season. Here we go. I got one shot. I can go down there to to David Lowry's pond and try to slide in and qualify for the Georgia State Championship, and then go to Seminole and qualify for the Bassmaster Championship. So I may I may shoot the long shot on that one. Try to try to run double duty on the on the Georgia game and and see if I can slide in there. Yeah, I want to. I think it, I think it'd be a lot more fun to go up and and fish in addition to, you know, just attending the classic, the classic is fun. The expo is great. You get to hang out with, you know, a lot of your friends that you don't see all the time, but I think, you know, just having the extra motivation to go up there and you actually get to fish too is even better. Yeah. I'll be, obviously it's going to be close by here. So I'll go to that regardless. Uh, even if I'm not fishing, if you're, if when, if, and when you're in the tournament, right, I'll come over and maybe I'll, maybe I'll film you. I'll go live on KBN. Come on, and come on with it. How about that? This is a good, uh, good, good point. A communication sponsor. We can get, get, get uh, Verizon on T-Mobile yeah, or something. Yeah, visible wireless or, you know, what's that? What's that? What's that Walmart wireless that we have that they have? I, I forget. It's like pay as you go. Go phones. One hundred ninety-two inches to win Rayburn RKF. Is that a is that a guess or a fact or what is that? What's happening there? RKF on Joe YouTube Matt. was asking about Rayburn earlier on the deal here. Rolando's cut. Is that Rolando Nandine? RKF Rolando's kayak fishing. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Maybe could be. Maybe. Well, if he's. You think he's it's going to take 192 inches to win a September tournament on Rayburn? You never know. Could be. <laughs> Corey said Ryan Reynolds meant wireless. Seems appropriate for KBN. <laughs> I'd take that. That is Rolando Nadine. How about that? Hey, Rolando. Good to see you, Good to see you in the comments, Rolando. 
cricket wireless. Damn you all. Don't don't do don't do yeah, that. We're never gonna it's hard enough to submit fish, much less <laughs> much less stream with a broken phone. Yeah, I don't think you can stream from flip phones. Yeah, that'll be interesting. We'll have to do we'll do uh Rayburn pre show and get some get some predictions going for that one. Yeah. All right, let's do this giveaway, Ryan. Any pair of Revos. Let's, let's see who's gonna get slower old tonight. Dun dun dun. Who could it be? We going F- Facebook or YouTube. Who's winning, Ryan? YouTube. YouTube. Todd Martin's Facebook. Hey, all Fishing right. Down in pool ten, Todd Martin. <laughs> Selling spots all day long. There you go, Todd. He was busy in the comments tonight, so he earned this victory. I like it. Well, that was a great show. I'm going to go sleep for 12 hours. You earned that as well, Ryan. Hey, have a great night, everybody. See y'all next week. See y'all.